Later on that same day, the post target commander, Colonel Reed T. Boy, summoned all the target details, soldiers and SSS, in his office. Colonel Boy said that it was mandatory all target operatives must meet back in his office that night. I was suspicious and very fearful that something very bad was about to take place in the stockade. We were later joined by a special squad from the executive mansion. For the executive mansion guard detachment in other areas. A lot of them I didn't know. Very surprisingly, nothing specific was being discussed. And Colonel Boyd asked his bodyguards if the convoy was prepared. Colonel Boyd ordered the convoy to proceed to a nightclub on Gurley Street, where we disembark and follow him into the club. Once seated, Colonel Boy asked a bartender to serve everyone drinks of their choice. So the party began. After some time, Colonel Boy abruptly requested for the bill, paid and started to head out to the cars. The convoy was heading back to the post target, and by this time, I became very, very suspicious of what was coming. Upon arriving in the stocket fence, after a brief delay in his office, Colonel Boyd ordered us into the mean inner fence of the post target, where the squad leader, name unknown, like I said, I didn't know most of these people, except for a few, one or two that I could remember from the executive mansion. I don't even remember his name now, but I remember his face very well. Order his men into position. Colonel Boy ordered the jailer, name unknown, to release former PRC chairman Major General Thomas Westen and his four co-conspirators. It, it immediately became apparent to Westen and his co-conspirator that they were about to face their fate because they could vividly, as I was told, remember the first release of their fellow inmates when A.B. Torbert and Vanny Dempster were prematurely released under the guard of darkness about the same time and they were never returned nor heard from anymore. Suddenly, Wesson and his co-detainees each broke into loud cries and hollering in English, saying, quote, my people, they're coming to kill us all. Do is killing us all, unquote. They were repeating their cries and their various vernacular continuously as the special squad was ordering them to shut up and line up, line up. I wanted to leave the scene that moment, but the gate was shut and guarded. The, post, the most unbearable moment came 
when the squad leader ordered his men to shoot. The condemned prisoners began to cry even louder, but only to be silent forever by the barrage of bullets when Weston <coughs> and his co-conspirators were savagely and unceremoniously gone down without being blindfolded or even a minister some spiritual right. I stood there Please excuse me. <clears throat> I stood there helplessly in total disbelief. <clears throat> that I had just witness the murder of another human being. I can still picture the scene like it is just happening. It is a memory that I would take to my grave. As if it was not enough to watch the gruesome murder of fellow Liberians without due process. I was even more heartbroken when the PRC government announced the same day that Wesson and his co cool prisoners were killed as they were escaping through the attic of the post-talking. 
not only did the Doe government murder fellow citizens in cold blood, but they shamelessly lie to the Liberian people without any remorse. 